I was looking around online to find a, a tutorial talking about using the Blackmagic Ultra Studio Mini Recorder and actually using two of them uh, into a tool like Wirecast that basically turns that software into a cheaper um, live switching or recording streaming option, um, which is quite handy. Uh, I don't know why more people don't seem to be using this as a live switcher option. I'm actually recording this in a recording studio that has a full on black magic uh, recording setup. Here we're using the 1ME uh, production switcher and uh, it's a great, great device, um, but it's rack mounted and it's not very flexible. So what I was looking for was a, a neater recording option that will, would both allow me to record and to stream live. Um, and I didn't really find any other tools that could do that well, or at least the way I wanted to. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna show you just take these two cameras and hook two of these babies up and uh, pull them into Wirecast and briefly show you how that's done. All I gotta do here is to connect these two, and these are identical. They're both the Ultra Studio Mini recorders. These are compatible both with SDI cameras as well as HDMI. And I'm using two HDMI right now, but you can also, I've done, I've done both different kinds, just to make sure that they can take both an HDMI and an SDI uh, at the same time, and that's fine. You basically just have to set it up here in the desktop utility, and I'll show you real quick how to do that here. So let me go ahead and show you how this is done. So this is the desktop video utility. This software comes with the mini recorders when you order them. Um, otherwise, you can download it free from the Black, Black Magic Design website. So here, the tricky part when you have both of them hooked up is just knowing which one is which. But down here, I wasn't sure how this would show up, but it actually does show up as two separate screens showing you both recorders, which is great. So now here, we can just select. And of course, we want HDMI for this one. Now you can see how this would be tricky. If one of them was HDMI, one of them was SDI, you would have to just kind of use your power of deduction, figure out which one is which, to figure out which one should be what format. Um, of course, you can just disconnect one, set it up, connect the other, set that up, and that should work fine. But, uh, so now we've got both inputs here. So let me switch over to Wirecast. Here in Wirecast, I'm not gonna uh, spend much time showing you how to do, use this, and I'm fairly new to the software as well, so I'm sure I'm not showing you the best way to use everything. But just to give you a feel for that this works and how it works, um, I'm gonna go ahead and set up a new shot. And right down here, you can see that it shows up as capture cards, the Ultra Studio Mini Recorder 1. Let's go ahead and add that here. And then next to it, I'm gonna go ahead and add number two. So now I have both these sources ready to go. And um, so let me just show you real quick an example of of the power of using this as a tool. So now I have, you can see I have my first shot here coming from my Sony 7S. And I can go ahead and pull that up here. And now I have a second camera and I have two tools to choose between. So you can probably see here how, how powerful, basically you have a live switching tool built into the software. And of course the beauty here is that you have both the ability to record and to stream and most people only use this tool to stream things, but I can see it being a very valuable tool to have this as a live recording option as well. If you wanna be somewhere recording a, a workshop, recording some kind of education material, the beauty here is that you have something where you can make the switches on to go and seriously decrease the amount of time you spend in post-production afterwards with a multi-camera setup. Uh, we use this here at the school I work for, and it's very powerful for recording lectures and significantly cuts down post-production time. I haven't used this setup too much, but it, I am planning on using this more as an in-classroom setup every once in a while, even though we do most of the recordings here in the studio with a more full-on production switcher. And I've found now as well that Wirecast, the new version, Wirecast 7 that was just announced, seemed to also have um, and I haven't tested this, but it, it says it actually has individual recording uh, featured for the different camera sources as well, which is really nice, because this means you can now not only record the final output of what you're doing to switching, camera one, camera two, camera one, and just record your cuts, but you can now keep the sources as well, so that if you make a mistake or want to make a change down the road in post-production, you have the freedom to which is really nice. Again, you're gonna spend more time, but it's nice to have that freedom, especially if you're doing real and sensitive work. I'm sure you can see the potential of this. This, this really can be a quite powerful tool. 
Now, I haven't really been testing these for significant long periods of time, but I have for some, I left it going for, for some time, and it, it seems to be running fine. It doesn't seem to be overheating or anything like that. Um, Wirecast and the computer seems to be able to handle the performance of two of these uh, without a problem. I'm not really seeing the CPU usage go through the roof or anything like that. Um, the usage does seem to go up quite a bit when you are using uh, both streaming and recording at the same time. So it's nice if you use either or, um, or perhaps uh, just use your streaming um, to automatically record to whatever streaming service you're using, such as, for example, YouTube Live, Facebook Live. Um, I'm sure that having it recorded in there would work for you in most cases. Um, and if you really need a high quality recording, uh, you can, of course, focus on recording it on the computer and not streaming it. But maybe you're fine streaming and recording both. I haven't tried it for an extended period of time, but it might work fine. So if you're looking to do uh, a more mobile uh, recording with live switching option, this is what I would recommend you take a look at. Now, I know there are options out there like the, the Convergent Design Apollo option that you can get on the Odyssey recording device, and that's awesome, and I'm excited about that, and I've been looking at that as well. But it is actually not that cheap. If you get the uh, Apollo as a separate device with a feature built in, I believe it's now, late, last I checked, about $3,000. And your recorder and your switcher, great. Okay, $3,000. That's still a fair amount of money if you're getting started with this. Um, this, um, you can purchase a copy of Wirecast. I actually purchased my, my uh, license of it on uh, Cyber Monday following Black Friday of last year, 2015, um, for I think approximately $300 or so. And uh, then each of these guys is approximately, I think it's like 100 and 150 or something like that each. So then, you know, basically $600, let's say you buy Wirecast for a little bit more, what could it be, you know, five, $600. There's a pro version and a regular version. Let's say you get the regular version. I think that's in the ballpark of $500 plus $300. Okay, so say $800, compare that to the Apollo at $3,000. And here, I feel like you have a little bit more control of your options, plus you're able to live stream it, which is fantastic. You can't do that on the Apollo. I'm gonna keep looking around and finding what other solutions there might be out there to do similar things, but to me, for now, this seems like a pretty good setup. Another thing that's really cool, if you're not familiar with the Ultra Studio Mini Recorder, is that basically, maybe this goes for some of you without saying, but basically this means you're now pulling your camera in as an input into your computer just like if you plugged in a webcam. So now, if you log into something like Skype, you can actually choose the Blackmagic Studio Recorder, and I have the other one set up here, um, as an external camera to any kind of app that uses a webcam on your computer, which is really neat. So if you're gonna do any kind of, you know, um, Skype hosted session um, during an event or, or anything like that, uh, or maybe perhaps you're just really excited about hooking up your really expensive camera to Skype with your grandma. That would be awesome. Then uh, you can use this for that as well. And uh, I didn't mention that, but of course you can use this to pull in video and audio as well. So you can actually set up one of your two camera inputs to also be your audio input. If I, for example, hook up my C100 here, I can hook up an XLR mic, uh, put up, set a wireless mic on that Canon. Then I actually have professional sound, maybe even wireless sound coming in to Wirecast or whatever I'm using for software on my computer through my camera. Um, otherwise, of course, you can use one of your two Thunderbolt ports uh, for some kind of external microphone input. Of course, you can use your USB for port for some kind of external micro, um, some kind of external audio input. Um, but if you just want to use Thunderbolt and use these guys, you have a way to do that as well. If you appreciate videos like this, um, take the opportunity to, to please like the video and uh, maybe subscribe to my channel. And um, I'll be putting out more videos like this. Um, I have a trip coming up to Sweden where I'm from, where I'm going to be taking my RX10 Mark III. And I'm going to be doing a little bit more thorough review of this camera that's still fairly new to me. So that's going to be coming up here soon as well. So this is a handy tool. I, I do recommend it. I feel like it's worked really well for me. And uh, yeah, pick one or two of them up. And uh, if you're wondering if you could use two of them, now you know you can. Thanks for watching. Have an awesome week.